Hello friends, my wife asked me to create a yarn holder for her hobby and I will try to do it. I know that is easy way just buy it, but I need a reason. I need a reason to buy and turn 100mm piece of stainless steel. Let's try. For now, let's leave that block of stainless steel for dessert and start with something simpler. First, I need to make a shaft that will run on two ball bearings. I use 11SMN30 steel. It is free machining and cuts very well, but you cannot weld it and it can rust. Its strength is similar to medium aluminum alloys, but it is cheaper. For this project it's a good enough. The part will stay indoors and will not have heavy loads. I turn the shaft to the bearing size. I make a loose fit so the parts are easy to assemble and remove. Because I need a little preload in the bearings, I drill and type a hole for the set screw. Then I machine the outer end of the shaft for the spindle rod. This material cuts very well. I use a 1.5 mm carbide grooving insert made for stainless steel. Now I make the spindle rod for the yarn. I use a 12 mm aluminum round bar. The finished part will be 200 mm long and 8 mm in diameter. A long thin part like this absolutely needs support from a life center, so I drill a center hole sided for an M5 thread later. This aluminum bar has an adhesive oxide layer from the factory. Aluminum oxide is very hard, like grinding abrasive. I put some oil on the bar to reduce the dust and place a chip tray under it. I take a routing cut. I reduce the diameter from 12 to 8.5 mm in one pass. The chips are soft and break easily. I remove them by hand. Then I take a light finishing cut and remove 0.5 mm. I would like a cleaner finish, but thin long rod likes to vibrate. I cut the tip in two pieces and then part it off. I chuck it again and cut an M5 thread so it can screw onto the shaft. Here is the finished spindle rod. The surface looks good. Back to the shaft. I cut the M5 thread here too. I support the die with the tail stock to keep everything straight. Next, I make a small washer. It will hold the lower bearing in place. I bore the hole for the screw head, then turn the flange that will fit into the bearing and part the piece off. I use the same free machining steel for this part. And now things get more interesting. I bought a stainless steel disc. It is 100 mm diameter and 20 mm thick. It weighs about 1.2 kg. It's exactly the size of my chuck. So runout must be zero. If not, I could have a heavy spinning disc trying to move the whole lathe. I use a 4 jaw independent chuck. I can set the disc very accurately in almost any position. It takes more time than a normal chuck but I'm used to it and I'm not in a hurry. I get the runout down to 50 microns. That is fine for this job. I start by facing the surface. I take 0.1 mm per pass. I also keep cutting speed below 200 mm per minute. So I set 600 rpm. The stainless cuts nicely and gives a good finish. I'm using polished carbon inserts for non-ferrous metals. I try a finishing pass, but the improvement is small. Then I drill the center hole. First a center drill, then 3 mm, then 9 mm. I'm still learning how to drill stainless steel. It makes noise and vibrates. People say to slow down and increase the feed, but I don't want to break the drill. Now I bore the recess for the rotating plate. I remove 1 mm on the diameter with each pass. I have an electronic fit with after stop, so it is more convenient for me to bore this recess using it. You can see the spindle load, 75 mm diameter, 1 mm cut from diameter, stainless steel, 50 microns per revolution, 600 rpm. The boring bar makes noise, it is not very stiff. I smooth the bottom and bore bearing seat. I set the depth stop to 4.8 mm. 
the bore is 9 mm and the smallest diameter my tool can cut is 11 mm, so I remove 3 mm on the diameter. I reduce the feed to 10 microns per revolution. I test the parts. The bearing fits is loose, on purpose to make assembly easy. Next, I machine the outside. The surface is tapered, so I turn the compound to the needed angle. I set the angle using a digital projector. The cut is good and there is no visible chatter. I don't know why the cut sounds like that. Maybe stainless steel likes to sing. I take a finishing pass. Now the chips are long and dangerous. Stainless chips are strong and sharp. At one moment the chip wrapped around the chuck and ripped off my angle indicator. But the part looks great. Stainless steel is beautiful, even if the chips look like a horror movie. I flip the jaws and clamp the part from inside. Runout is good enough for this project. The part is held only by 2 mm. So I face the inside carefully and support it with the life center. I face and turn the outside again. The chip problem returns. Finally, I find cutting settings that make a small chips. much safer. I clean the outside, but still not find finishing settings that always break chips. Maybe a smaller insert radius would help. I chamfer the bottom. The chamfer is about 3 mm wide at 100 mm diameter. I start to feel vibration. The machine is reaching its rigidity limit. I bore the second bearing seat. The fit is good. But I clamped too hard earlier and left marks, so I rechuck with soft shims and remove a teeny layer to clean the surface. Now I make the rotating support disc. I will flip it later, so first I drill and rim the center hole. I check the feed and then face the disc. Even the finishing passes make big chips. After each pass, I have to stop the spindle and clean the machine. I wanted to surface green it, but the finish looks good, so I leave it. I flip the disc and turn it down to 2 mm thick. I could not part it, by cutting from the side, so I remove all extra material while supporting it with the tailstock. The disc was plasma cut from sheet metal, the edge is probably hardened, you can even see sparks while cutting. I add chamfers. The disc looks good. It rotated slightly while cutting, but the scratches will be hidden. The disc is mild steel, so I blew it to make it look better. If the disc heats unevenly, it can deform. For even heating, I use a small camping torch. After heating, I dip it in linseed oil. I do this twice. The result is a bit unusual. I probably should have heated it more, but it still looks nice. I stick rubber pads to the base with double-sided tape. They keep the stand from sliding on the table. Now I assemble the stand. I install the first bearing on the shaft. The second bearing goes into the base. I put the disc on the shaft and hold it with the spindle rod. I will tighten it properly later on the lathe. I put the shaft and disc into the base and support the lower bearing so it does not fall out. I install the washer, then I put in the set screw and tighten it just enough to add a small preload. 
This stops the stand from spinning freely and unwinding the yarn if the thread is pulled quickly. The rotation is smooth and quiet. There is no run out. The spindle rod wobbles a little. It is 200 mm long and under 8 mm diameter and it deformed a bit after machining. And here is the finished yarn holder. I can spin it with one finger by the rod. Time will show how good the design is. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.